What is up, everybody? This is Recap Rewind. I'm Jay Lag. And I'm NB. And this episode is recapping reviewing Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 4. And it's called... The Last, the Last of the Stalks. Of the Stalks. Don't forget to listen to the end as we recap our roundups, our best moments of the episode, our best lines, our MVPs, our LVPs. And don't forget to watch our reaction video to next week's promo only on our YouTube channel. And as always, to our continuing listeners and our brand new ones, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so really quick, because I've heard a lot of versions this today, but what did you think? I... I enjoyed it. Okay. It's, okay, sorry. It's hard for me to talk about this episode. Why? <laughs> and it's really weird because I watched it last night and I liked a lot of it. And then there was parts of it that I was like sad the way it went. So I don't know if it's like I... It's not that I didn't like it, but it was just sad. There were sad things in this episode that I didn't want to happen happen. And I was like, oh, man, really? Oh, like man, sad really? that like, like you I, can accept or sad that you do accept and understand that it had to happen because it's almost over. I mean, yeah, sure. If you want to look at it that way, absolutely. I shouldn't be expecting <laughs> everybody to survive the end of this all. But at the same time, it just sucked the way things went down, especially with like the dragon and you know like it just things sucked but i was i i liked it i think there was a lot of great moments in this episode as always like game of thrones always like is top notch anyway but this is definitely like a filler everybody was filler in the sense that like it didn't drive the story forward as much because it just basically made everybody more angry but um essentially it's all just focusing more on the dialogue between the characters tying up even more loose ends after this big battle and uh setting us up for the next big episode which i think is going to be the biggest episode of the season yeah i mean i think what did you I, think? I don't think it was a filler i think it was completely necessary i definitely do think it drives a little bit along we needed it it was another really long episode um but it didn't feel as yes. long as the last week's um because it, it wasn't as like back and forth fighting but there were some questions that i asked along the way and we'll get into it in the podcast but like I did enjoy it. Sure. There was so many good moments of it that I loved and that I that I wanted to happen. Yeah. But there were moments like, example, the Masande capture that I have to question and, and like logistically yeah. be like, how the fuck did that happen? Like, what's going on? Like, you guys are like terrible right. people, like boat riders. Like, come on. So <laughs> it's just like certain things like that. But no, it's good. Let's sure. get let's get into it. Yeah, no, I So guess. the first scene that we do so, get to cut right to we are still in Winterfell. We're still in the north. Right. And we're sort of dealing with the backlash of like what happened last week. It's like they've sort of yeah. cleaned up the bodies and they've put them into like these really um like like all the funeral like pyres. Huge basically. pyres of like dead bodies basically. Um and so we really get this whole montage of like, you know, seeing Ser Jorah and like Lyanna mm -hmm. and Beric and like we get to sit with these characters a bit more. Um and really yeah. like soak up this sort of like memorial that they have they like light them on fire um and For it was sure. really cute but i was glad that it didn't last long because i was like okay i've mourned them now like i'm good like let's move on to like the next yeah um th part of all of this which is now yeah. they get to sort of celebrate or move past this huge war that just happened move past it exactly and i think but it was a like i will say like before we move move on um it it was a really powerful scene to watch like you know danny saying her final goodbyes to jora um i thought was really powerful for aria to be the one to you know like burn um barracks uh you know his funeral pyre i thought that was really powerful and to see sansa even have her moment with theon and then give her um give him her like that stark was pin really was really emotional. really sweet yeah and i was like wow i can't believe like you know i know that those characters were like not central and a lot of the characters had their own storylines and didn't really lead up to anything but we do have to remember they did lead to this moment they led Definitely. to last episode and, like, and and like one of the things that john stresses here and i think this is like what i like took with me the whole effing time was that he was like yeah. we all came from different parts but like we fought for like one cause like we fought for like humanity basically yeah. and like that made us who we are and right. i was like i hope you guys remember yeah. this moving forward <laughs> like like please don't fight with each other i was like damn did like obama speech yeah. right or write that like, speech for him because like cute. it was pretty epic yeah. <laughs> yeah 
Um, and so, yeah, they're having these moments, like Danny and him exchange a moment too. And he's like, I still can't talk to you about this right now. Um, yeah. So that whole thing happens. And then it cuts to like dinner time. It cuts so to everybody's dinner time. inside like, This was like a really interesting scene because yes. at first they're kind of, of like, yeah, a lot of shit goes down. So like at first, like everyone's like somber because like they don't know like how to react. Because like, is it a funeral? Is it a party? Like, are we getting lit? Like what's going on? Yeah. And then Danny says yeah. as the queen that she is, she's like, guys, get lit. Like, just have fun. Like we just won. Like sick. Right. Um, What kind of th- uh, what I was missing was like nobody really mentions the Night King. Like I think someone mentions like, where's Arya? Like she killed the Night King. But that was really it. Yeah. Like otherwise we didn't really hear that like. Yeah. The White Walkers are gone forever, you know? We're literally, like, past We're it done. now. We're yeah, like, yeah. We're done with the <laughs> like storyline. It's over. TVT, that happened a long time ago. Like, I was like, guys, <laughs> yeah. it just happened. Like, can we, like, discuss? It just happened last <laughs> yeah. week. It was a huge situation for two yeah, seasons. Yeah, like, like, forever, on, basically. No. Um. Anyways, yeah, so yeah. that kind of happened. And then, like, everyone's, like, getting lit. And then I think a big moment that yeah. happens here is um, Gendry, like, goes up to... um the hound and he's like yo he's like where's Arya he's like shut up he's like don't he's like why are you asking me about Arya like he got like so protective um yeah. and then Genji like goes I guess to like kind of look for her right like he walks kind of away yeah. but then he has to cross Danny's table right and she's like boy she's she like stops <laughs> she's like are you Gendry whatever he's like yeah um, and she basically like she says she's like thank you like for everything that you've done. She first starts off by like saying like your family killed everyone like started this war basically. Yeah. I'm like oh my god is she gonna kill this kid? I was like girl this is not the yeah. time to start a war again. <laughs> yeah. Come on. But yeah so she basically says like I'm gonna name you like Lord of Storms End like that's where your family is from like right. from this day forward like you're like Gendry Baratheon like you're no longer a bastard. And he was like right. oh my god like thank you whatever. Um, and he walks away. And it was cute because I think in that moment, the Onion Knight, who like basically saved him, yeah. was like, for Gendry. Like yeah, he was like so were, happy like, for so him. Lit. Yeah, it was really cute. But then as soon as that happens, Tyrion like turns to Danny and he's like, all oh, good call. Like turning, like you, you're basically like making alliances now. He's always going to be indebted to you. And she's like, yeah, I'm smart. And then the entire time it cuts to Sansa and Sansa's like, fully staring her down he, she's like bitch i saw that shit coming from a long time ago oh yeah i was like they're gonna have words did you notice, for sure like did you Sansa's- notice that like danny didn't drink her drink um why because it was a pumpkin spice latte <laughs> no <laughs> okay yeah so sansa first of all sansa's looks like sophie turner's fucking side eye is like next level like this yeah. girl has Full. nailed down the side eye they have to hire her for like movies yeah. just for the side eye like look but um yeah so well yeah one of the biggest things that happens like in this party moment is like torment like gets so lit he's like john snow is like our king like he saved everyone i'm yeah. like um Arya saved everyone thank you very much like john did shit all i know like, just because he rolled the that's dragon, the thing that pissed me off too he's, he's like yo he rolled yeah. that dragon like a girl like like he's i'm like okay everyone calm the fuck down this girl's been riding dragons like eight years now like ca- calm down for eight years like, <laughs> exactly you know and she looked over and she's like what she's like i'm like whatever so you could tell she was feeling some type yeah. of way towards all the men kind of like egging on john and whatever and yeah, yeah. so they toast to him and Apparently, right. I missed it watching it last night, but apparently, oh, I it too. Danny yeah. would be sipping on some pumpkin spice latte during that <laughs> during that <laughs> shot. So there was a huge, I guess, mistake that they made, and somebody forgot to erase a cup of coffee. Uh, it was like obviously a Starbucks coffee sitting on the counter, and uh, yeah, clearly fans were like eyeing this thing like hawks. They found it in the background and. Um, it's become I mean, like a huge it wasn't even now. in the like, background it was like legit it. right in front of her so like i'm like how did we yeah. not notice it, it last right night yeah. um and it's like and it's so white yeah. like it's like the white starbucks yeah. cup so like it kind of pops in the background so like you can't tell know, if you like guys, just watch i don't it. know if it's like a easter egg or it's like someone someone I done fucked it. up hard like i don't know how you guys miss that with all the approvals and probably like all the eyes that like it had to go through yeah. like i don't understand how someone you literally that. can make dragons like yeah. You guys can make dragons. You can't make a fucking cup of coffee disappear. Like they, it's hard for me that's to the believe thing. That they that probably that was didn't situation. see it. You know what I mean? Because like if they saw yeah, it, they, they would have for it. sure CGI'd it out or whatever, like masked it out. But like, yeah. yeah. Anyways, that was really funny. But well, my point was that she that doesn't. She doesn't drink. 
she doesn't drink the drink. Yeah, you are right. And I she was like, drink. girl, I'm like, you pregnant? Like, why? She pregnant. Yeah, I'm like, she's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why is not she not drinking? What's going on? But she wouldn't know, she, right? Like, she wouldn't know she was pregnant. Yeah, and like, yeah, because they didn't have like pregnancy Unless she tests. was like feeling <laughs> nauseous. She's like, I don't yeah. feel good. I don't. I can't drink right and, now. And it didn't, it doesn't um, really come so, up by the end of the episode. So I'm like, okay, maybe she doesn't know no. yet. Like, she's just not drinking. Yeah. The one thing that I want to talk about really quickly in this dinner scene as well, um, because we, it never arises for the rest of the episode, and I don't even know if this is the final time we're going to see fucking Bran, but Bran has a final conversation with Tyrion in this episode, and he, like he's sitting by the fire, and he's like, nice wheelchair, and then Bran's like, yeah, I like it, it's cool. And they like the one thing that I will say about Bran is he's useless. Yeah, he pretty much is. <laughs> like. Yeah. What the fuck did he do this whole time outside of telling John his truth and fucking it. shit no, up for their it. sex life? <laughs> yeah, like, that was what it. else did you fucking do? <laughs> like, you literally did nothing else. You, you saw couldn't these even save happening. the world. Like, your sister had to but save the world. But you couldn't say anything. <laughs> and now he's like, and he's like, I live in the past now. And then literally, it like walks him back. Like, somebody <laughs> like pulls him away. <laughs> and I was like, oh wow. <laughs> You're like, exiting the fucking show yeah. like wow <laughs> like he's like what is his purpose now he literally is nothing no, he to did do the same thing to Theon last week he was like i'm gonna go now i'm gonna leave this conversation <laughs> like, <laughs> that's his full out storyline it's like i'm just gonna leave back my ass out of this wall like with his wheelchair like what the hell i was so confused I don't know if you guys have any other theories or if you guys even care anymore, but let us know what you think if Bran has any more purpose inside the show anymore or was that like the final goodbye? And it was just, to me, it was just weird seeing Tyrion, you know, have a conversation with him him again because before, if you don't remember, like before the war, before the battle at Winterfell, they had a conversation by the fire and then again, they had this conversation exactly, by the fire. Yeah. So I'm like, is he getting information from Bran that we're not going to understand until later? Like, is it going to ha- like nothing? So, There's literally no reason why these two people should the be talking only reason to each why other. I, like, sorry, yeah, cool. No, that's it. Like, I, I, if it was Jamie, I would understand. Like, at least it's like a tense moment. They can have like an awkward conversation. Like Tyrion. Like, why do you even want to talk to this br- kid who doesn't have anything? Yeah, to say? my only thing with Bran is like, I kind of wish he did die during the Battle of Winterfell because now I'm like. Now I'm just like, okay, he knows everything. So he can fucking go tell them, like, what's going to happen. Like, that's the thing with having this person who has this wisdom and who has this sight. Like, they could just cheat the entire season and be like, bro, this is what's going to happen. Like, be careful. Like, the Greyjoys are going to be hiding around the corner at Dragonstone. Like, he could have told them that. And it's so stupid that, that, like, I get it. They can't do that because there's a whole season to fill up. I understand. But, like, when someone has that talent, you question, like, why is he not filling these gaps for them, you know, to help them at least. Like... And you know what the thing is too, I will say, and like this is this must be just like a character thing, but like is there a reason why he literally has to act like a zombie the entire time? Because I don't remember the fucking uh, th- old Three Eyed Raven being this fucking boring. You know what I mean? I mean, the old like, Three Eyed Raven was he had like a personality. Tree, so like, he was talking. <laughs> he, like, homie didn't have a choice. <laughs> he was like frozen in a like, tree. But he at least like he at least had like conversations like there were pure conversations and it's funny because when you see Bran standing and he's walking around in his memories he's always like so active he's like oh what's going on behind this tree oh like my uncle my aunt is getting married I mean, to like I mean that doesn't bother me as like, much because it's just like it's like it's who he is now you know what I mean he's so unfazed with what's yeah, happening currently he's just know, too, whatever I just he's think just, that they made his character so fucking flat like he's so I just flat. don't know where he goes from here you know what I, I mean know. like now what for Brad yeah. that's all my that's my question at this point so like me not care me anymore not care. Me not care. Um, another funny thing that happens is like okay. Jamie and Brienne at the party oh yeah cause like that's Tormund's like all up on that sure. girl's butt and then Jamie's like sitting with her and like they're playing like everyone's yeah. drunk and it's so playing drinking fun games, to see yeah. them like happy and laughing and like I just never thought we'd yeah. see it again so it's really nice to see. And For then sure. Tyrion comes over to like Jamie and then they start playing a game. And then basically right. I think their exit is Tyrion asks if she's a virgin. And then she Yeah, he basically says it. He's like, You're a yeah. virgin. And she's and like, like, Wow. She has to drink if she is, but she doesn't drink. She's right. like, I gotta go pee. And then like she dips. Yeah. 
and then Jamie like chases after her and I'm like oh my god oh my god oh my god like what's gonna happen they're gonna and then like Tormund yeah. sees he's like oh he's like my girl he's like yeah. crying <laughs> he's like poor so guy sad. he's like so sad um he ends up like going over later to like the hound he's like yeah she broke my heart <laughs> I was like poor guy he's so cute and then so then also before that night ends um, we do get to see, uh, so yeah, so Jamie that follows moment. Brienne out, yeah. and then she's like already like in her room. She's like getting all cozy with like her cute little socks, or whatever. And then he comes in, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, da- he's like, damn, like it's so hot in here. He's like, why do you keep it so hot? He's like taking off his jacket, yeah. and like he can't get it off, so like she takes it off for him. And then he just right. starts taking off her shirt. She's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? And he's like, I'm taking off your shirt. She's like, uh, yeah. And I don't really know how it starts. And then they just start making I think she, out. I think he kisses her. Like, he jumps on her and he, like, makes out with her. Yeah. And that's kind of, like, all how it happens. And, like, they totally end up having sex. And it was amazing. Yeah. Like, I loved it, personally. I think she deserved to have sex, number one. Uh, number two, <laughs> like, I think they love each other. And I think, like, I don't know. Like, it was cute. What did you think? I don't. See, I didn't know if I was going to enjoy this experience because I always saw them as like almost like comrades and brother and sis, like almost like not sexually. I I never really even though the entire time you hear like Brienne loves Jamie and, you know, she like loves him, whatever. But I never really saw them as those people. I always saw them as people who were like, you know, I got you, bro. And I got you. you I really. So when it happened, I was like, I get it. But I guess it just feeds back into what happens later on in the episode where he's like, it's not strong enough for me to stay. You know what I mean? That's fucked up. That's so like fucked up. The, the sexual pull that like Cersei has is like a lot so, stronger than Yeah, Brienne's. so let's get into that later. But also what I want to say is you're right. I did always see them as like boys, like comrades on the field. But then like boys. this this <laughs> season, it really turned into something like the and not from her, from him. Like the way he just looked at her True. in moments, the way he like looked at Tormund when Tormund was like all up on her ass. Like I was like, oh, my God, like he likes her more than just as like a knight, like as a per- like he like he's yeah. in love with her. Um, and so like I was really happy for her that like she got to experience love. Listen, I was like, get it, girl. I honestly like supportive. Obviously, like I'm happy that it happened. I'm really happy that they like got their situation together. But it did for me. It was like, I don't know. I, I just I didn't see it. And then when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I can see it. That's fine. And then I think from there, it kind of we we leave the party room, right? And we go to yeah. I think it's Danny and John, and right or yes. was it Arya first? Whatever. It was Arya. It's Arya first. Yes, it's Arya first. Because Danny leaves. She like she's so like depressed, and then she's lonely and shit. Because like no one wants to talk to her, and she just like dips. And it was a sad moment because you have to do. You do have I to realize so that like everybody has someone. Yeah. You know, like the Lannister brothers are there. The Stark family's over there. The Wildlings love no the Starks. One. And she has nobody. The one question that I had in this moment is like, where the fuck was Missande? Like, yeah, like talking to Grey Worm. Like, where, where was your girl? You know, yeah. like, but like that's it. why couldn't she be there for you? Yeah, that's true. So anyway, like, you maybe know she what? Had the night I don't know off, who was saying this. Maybe I don't know who it was, but someone said it would have been nice to see Danny and Missande have like one effing scene together in this episode. Oh that's, yeah, that was me. Oh, sorry, I messaged you this sorry, morning because yeah. <laughs> it's true. Like, I'm like there was way too many Game of Thrones yeah. conversations last night. I'm like, I don't remember. <laughs> Um, but it, just because like you're setting up for her this girl's death, like it would have been cute to see. You're yeah. right, like it is kind of like her family would have been cute if she said like, "Hey, girl, hey, like I'm here for you. Like let's go have a drink together or something." For sure. Um, I I just wish that like, and that's the thing they set up all these characters for like potential deaths, and they did Missande so dirty. Yeah, like no, I just feel right. like she didn't right. get enough of a moment, and like the last conversation they had was talking about the fact that Grey Worm doesn't have a dick, like. <laughs> That's literally the last conversation they had together. Like, how do you guys not have a conversation about how powerful of a queen you've become? And I'm so proud of or like, you. I'll always or be your family. Nothing. Like, I've been with you from the beginning. And like, girl, we're going to be girls forever. Exactly. Something. And I get that that might have that might have hinted to probably her death this episode. But they literally did that last week with freaking Grey Woman. Her. They were like, we're going to live our life yeah. after this. Right. And I'm like, OK, one of you guys is going to die. Like, they we're going to be going to yeah. die. Exactly. Um, 
But yeah, I just I feel like just in general, Masande's character could have been so much bigger and so much more. And it just felt like they just like stuffed her into the storyline. They're like, OK, she has like a like she has a servant girl that like follows her around and like tells everybody that da- Daenerys is amazing. Yeah. And that's it. Like she didn't have yeah. anything else. She and it I'm, I think I'm OK with the character that she was and what she played. I think her death could have been completely scripted differently. I think I would have liked to see her go out with something a bit stronger, but we'll get to that after anyways. Um, yeah. But yeah, so this moment, basically, Gendry, like, finds Arya. Like, she's just, like, throwing, like, arrows, basically. And he's like, aren't you having fun? Like, aren't you yeah. going to party? <laughs> she's, she's like, like I am thing. partying. Like, this is, yeah. like, my me getting lit. And he was basically, <laughs> <laughs> he was basically like, yo, like, she gave me Storm's End. Like, I'm going to go there and I'm going to be a lord. And he's like, I want you to with me. And yeah. I'm, like, he basically gets out on one knee, which was so cute. I felt so but, like, bad you just for know him, the though. answer. I like, you like, know that she's going to say yeah. no. And he's like, come with me. Like, be my lady. And she's like, bitch, I ain't nobody, right. nobody's lady. She's like, you should already know that. Yeah. Like, I've already told you. Yeah. And she was like, it was a cool scene because they they give her a lot of scenes that mirror what her father says, right? Like, like her father says to her. So like her father, like she says that to her dad, like way back From when season, season one, season one. Yeah. yeah, when he's like, oh, you can be a lady just like Sansa, and she was like, that's not me. Like she literally says exactly what she says to Gendry, and she's like, that's not me. That's never gonna be me. I'm not gonna be a lady. And he's like, dumb, dumb it. I was like, did you really think that was going to work? Like, you got this, like... Yeah. You got this, like, girl, and then you think that she's just going to jump to you? You know who she is. Like, you know who she was this whole time. Like, why are you so surprised? Yeah. Did you want more from that storyline? I mean, I want her to have, like, the best life. So I... To- right. totally in my heart i was like just go with him go with him so you can be safe like like fuck cersei like who cares about that like that's what i wanted for her because i'm like she would be safe at least but i know that's not her right and i know like she's not gonna sit there yeah. and just go and live with him maybe after she does her right. things maybe she'll do that i don't know if there's a there's an aftermath for which for we'll, Arya, ta- but we'll yeah. get to that later um yeah we'll talk about so that then it cuts to let's talk about D- danny and john um because really like this is the first time uh-huh. that like we are sitting with them behind closed doors like since like you know right. the the, the, the fucking, aftermath you know tea was spilled and so she walks in to the room where he's standing and sh- she just says yeah. are you drunk <laughs> and i was like <laughs> i'm like she sounds like every annoyed girlfriend after like midnight when their boyfriend's yeah. fucking drunk like every like girl she's like are you drunk and then he like basically like, falls over he's like not really um He's like, kind and of. Like, yeah. So he pulls her closer and I was like, oh, fuck. I'm like, they still look hot together. It was such a sweet like, moment. They still I felt hot. so it was. And then it started off so beautiful because yeah. she was like, I love you because like, he talks about Jorah and he was like, he would have died for you. And she was like, I loved him, too, but not the as way, a friend. Like, that I love not you. the way that I love you. And I was like, damn it. And then like he pulls her and closer. They start really making emotional. out like. I think he yeah. starts to take off like her her like jacket and then he kind of just yeah. like freaks out like he glitches out and he's like oh my god like she's my fucking aunt like <laughs> yeah and, like, you could just see like yeah and she even says she's like I wish you never <laughs> fucking told me this <laughs> she shit was man so frustrated <laughs> That was so because like I feel like she was horny as fuck. Like she wanted to get it in, and like yeah, she was down. She and that. then she's like, "I wish you never told me. Why did you tell me that we get this?" Um, but yeah, like, and and I think yeah. that's how we all felt too. Because like we, it, there's this really fine line of like you wanted to have at least for me. Like I wanted them to do it, but then I'm like, but wait, like they're right. related, but they don't. Like they've never been related. They've never Who been cares? family. Like yeah. she was a stranger for like more like most of his life. Like who cares? Right. Like, you know. Um, but I think the important conversation that obviously happens in this moment is she's like, please don't tell anyone else. Like, please, please, please. Like, everyone yeah, she's will like, change. Got a secret? Can you keep yeah. it? Yeah. And he was like, no. He's like, I can't do that. And she's like, you don't understand. Like, they will. He's like, I don't even want the throne. He's like, I'll tell them, and like, I won't care. She's like, you don't understand. Like, I'll bend like, the people knee. People are no matter what gonna yeah. like go after you, and they're gonna want you to like be on the throne, and that will happen. And she starts begging him. Like she says, like I've never begged yeah. you for a single thing. She's like, I'm begging you, like do not tell anyone. And he's like, because he's like, I want to like live with you. I want to yeah. be happy. I want to like do all these things with you. And she was like, we can have all that if, if you, you don't keep tell anyone. Secret. And, and I was like, damn, that's an ultimatum and a half, girl, though. Like, and he damn. says, he's like, can we talk about this well, real quick? Because then though? he like, says, I, he's like, okay, he's like, at least let me tell Sansa, Arya, 
and like you right. know, like at least let me tell my sisters. She's like, no. She's like, Sansa will use it against me. She already hates me, and like whatever. And I was yeah. like, fuck. Like she's kind of right too. And it, it's just like I <laughs> yeah, just felt so bad for him. Is. Like I just felt so bad for him. But at the same time, <sighs> at the same time, why does he have to tell everyone? Why? Like, like why does it matter? Yeah. Like you're still a Stark. Like you're still a Stark because your mom is a Stark. It's not a big deal. You're freaking half siblings now. It's not like you're like you're yeah. like not in the family at all. You're still blood related. It's true. Just don't tell anyone at this point. Like you've lived your life without being a Targaryen. Like who cares if you don't know if no one else knows, you know? But I guess at the same time, I think maybe deep down, maybe deep, deep down, he thinks that by telling the truth, he'll be able to make a decision for like, you know, someone else will be able to give him a better decision. Because I don't believe this whole thing about because everybody kept saying he doesn't want the throne. He doesn't want the throne. He tells us he doesn't want the throne. When you say that truth and you tell everybody you spill all that fucking tea, don't tell me you didn't think about it for one second. Come on. Are you serious? Like, don't you feel that, like, there's more than just you telling the truth because you're an honorable person and you don't want to, like, lie to people? You know I what mean, I mean? I mean, I really do think he doesn't want the throne. Like, I feel like he really wants to be with her and he doesn't he doesn't care for the throne. But I think deep down he does know that, like, if he does come on and say it, people are probably going to side with him. And he knows that. So, but I still don't know why he's doing it. So then, why it. would you do know. it? Like, then why would you say it? That's the thing. I don't know. Like, who's like if you in your opinion? If, like, who's right here? Like, who's right? Well, okay. There's, it's there's obviously a two sided story. The one thing that I will say is Daenerys was definitely like, you can't give somebody an ultimatum. That's so unfair. Like, you can't be like, well, we can be together. Except and don't tell your thing. fucking family. The way don't the scene ended was really, really aggressive because he was like, I still want to be with yeah. you. She's like, I just told you how that's going to happen. And if it doesn't, like, fuck you. Right. I was like, oh, my God. But it's, it's like just the girl so in like her, extra for her to be so the angry. The girl in yeah. her, the, like, it just comes out so much. And I can't even be mad at her because I'm like, she's still legit, like, she's legit, like, 16 years old. Like, she's like so young still. And yeah. there's so many experiences that she hasn't gone through. Like, I don't know. It's so hard. It's so hard. I don't know. I I just feel like she got really like she got aggressive. She did really, really quickly. And I think that they could have resolved this. I honestly think like this storyline is annoying me to the point where I'm like, are you serious? Like, we're going to have to see them both like either die or one of them dying or one of them getting betrayed. Like, I don't think it's fair for us fans to watch this discord at this point in time when we spend so much time liking Danny and then we spend so much time like just be, like That's being okay like, with John because John always annoyed ugh, me. Like, I hate let's be John, real. Guys. John always like, annoyed me. He's so me. useless. Like freaking, just look at what he did for the Battle of Winterfell. Like he did shit all. Like he did nothing. He did not. Like he does. He like fucking fucks up all the time. So like to see this moment for us to just want them to be together, I don't understand why they can't just be like, let's be king and queen. Like let us just raise our family together. Like how come no? Like why is that such a wild thought? I don't understand why that's such a impossible thing to understand because later on we can talk about a little bit more later on but when Tyrion tells Varys and Varys is like or I think Tyrion says like we can try to marry them and they can rule as king and queen and Varys says oh no she's too over like she's too powerful like she'll always like you know like push him down I'm like she's doing it right now so why don't they just why doesn't she just agree to that why doesn't she just say like okay we're gonna come out and tell this news and then you're gonna marry me and then I'm going to like rule and it'll be fine. Yeah. Like I didn't think like I, I know I don't, I didn't understand where she was coming from. I didn't think that it was that big of a deal. Like maybe you see her side of it, but I really didn't I think, think she's that not- her telling this truth would have made a difference. Like, yes, seeing him in Winterfell and seeing all these people band behind him is one thing, but like, let's not forget about season three and season four and season, like all these seasons that she like liberated hundreds and thousands of people. People love her. Like you know she's what? not an evil They're person. They're turning her into a villain you know? so fast. And like, I, I don't appreciate and that. And it pisses like, me off. Like everyone today at work, shout out to everyone at work who's listening, but like, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, fuck Danny, like she's an evil bitch. I was like, yo, can you guys chill out? Like, for eight but years, that's like, what I we mean. love like, Danny. Like, I'm still by her side. Like, I'm not, like, I'm a ride or die. Like, I'm never going to give up on her. I still feel like she's going to come around and like, she's going to prove everyone wrong. But everyone is so quick to dump her. They're like, no, she's crazy. Yeah. Like, look at this crazy bitch. She's already getting I just mad think- at John. I'm like, oh my God. Like, yeah. I don't know. I just think that it was really wildly out of character for her to be 
this petty at this point in time in yeah. her life you know like she's been through so much like this was season one danny like for her to be like i will do this or i will not be angry like that's such a thing that she would have done way back when and people have taught her differently people have taught her to be more patient and okay be more so open to I things and, and she was more open in the beginning of the season in the beginning of this season she was like watching him be like cool with everybody else it was just this bomb drop of a conversation of her finding out that they're related that is going to change how she's gonna act toward him like well yeah it doesn't make sense to me it is a big bomb drop but okay my question to you here is if we find out that next week she is pregnant and that she knew this time like if she knew that she was pregnant in this week's episode will that change things Uh for you in terms of how she reacted to to john like we found out that she's pregnant so and she knew yeah let's say during this conversation she's pregnant and she knows that she's pregnant would that change? Oh, and she didn't tell him. she just him. didn't tell him because like, maybe she was waiting for his reaction to be like, don't worry, boo, I got you. And he didn't say that, so she didn't tell him. I'm just saying, like, do you think it would change your reaction I to it? I don't know. I feel like, for one, I don't think that that would be, like, a good plot line just because I'm, like, another secret that she's keeping the, from everybody, including the audience. Yeah. Like, come on, that's not fair. Um, but if it turns out that she's pregnant just on a general level and she finds out next episode – um, I would be also kind of moderately annoyed because then now it's telling everybody that like women act crazy because they're pregnant. <laughs> it's true. like, I don't actually, they I don't think that I'm that. into that storyline yeah. either. You know what I mean? Like for them to be like, Oh, she was pregnant. That's why she was totally out of her mind. Like she's like, she's not crazy. I understand where she, like what her rationale is, but I don't understand why she needs to be so impatient. And so, unfair all the time you okay, know what let's, i mean like let's keep going so that we can like fully discuss okay. once episode's done yeah but the, this is a hard it conversation is, it to is. Have. but um so the next big scene that does happen right after that moment is like they're in the war room and they're basically like deciding like what to do next and like how to get to king's landing right. how to get cersei and already you see the divide because like danny's on one side of the table yes. um sansa and Arya are on one side and john's like in the middle of the table so <laughs> you already know like some shit's about to go down like physical and divide. danny's like yeah. i'm ready to kill this bitch like let's go right now like let's go and sansa's yeah. like no we need to take a break like everyone's like tired like just like wait and Danny's like, okay, right. but like, how long do you? And this is the one of the moments that really pissed me off from Sansa. Danny was like, okay, like, how long do you think we can wait? Like, like, how long will they need to like rest up? Sansa's like, I don't really know. She's like, I'm gonna go like ask the commanders. And Danny's like, okay, but like, I'm not gonna <laughs> wait forever. Like, I just put my whole thing on pause for you guys. I came, I saved you guys, helped right. you guys, and now like, I want right. to go. And so in this moment, I was like, Sansa, like, it would have been good if, like, you came informed into that meeting. Like, this is a huge meeting that you guys have. I know. Have. She could have given her That's a number. She could have just said, yeah. like, seven weeks or you're something. You're trying to, like, like you're anything. just dropping this bomb on Danny, And Danny's like, okay, but, like, tell me how many weeks so I can wait. Or, like, I know a number. Right. Um, And I felt like that was, like. No, but they're just, they're sassy, just sassy with each other. Exactly. Like, she's definitely clapping exactly. back. She's yeah. just saying she's, to She's say definitely it, throw her some you know? shade. And then, like, whatever, yeah. like, Danny's, like, basically, like, they're, like, we're going to go and get her, whatever, get, like, Cersei. Yeah. And then as John's about, like, everyone else leaves and John's about to leave the room and, like, Arya steps in front of him. She's like, we got to talk now. Right now. Right now. Yeah. So Arya, like, she's like, we need to talk to our brother. So they literally, like, send him to the Godswood and they have a full, like, fam jam conversation. So cute. Bran sitting in the corner, like, so useless, once again. And basically... Arya and Sansa are like, I don't trust her. I don't. Uh, something's up with your queen. Like, I don't know what's wrong with first, her. First but of like, all, real quick, I love this moment because Sansa says right away, she's like, "You made a mistake. You can't trust her." And then, and then Arya <laughs> yeah, flips yeah. it, and Arya's like, "I respect you for everything that you've done. I respect your decision." And Sansa looks at Arya. Yeah. She's like, "Bitch, what?" <laughs> she's like, "She's like, you, you respect her, why?" And Arya's like, "No, he, yeah. she did come and save us. She did help us, but we don't trust her." And I was like, "Damn!" Right. Like even the differences from the two sisters and how like they reacted to all of that. Like that was so different. And John right. makes a really good point because he's like, he's like, you can't just trust your family. Like you're gonna have to trust people outside of your family to like make allies and like survive right. in the world. Um. Right. But what is really, you know, the elephant in the room at this at this point is like John's trying to tell them that like he's Targaryen, um, yeah. and Brad like breaks the silence. He's like, "You don't have to do it, John. 
you don't have to do it. Yeah, he's like, you have a choice. <laughs> yeah. It's up to you, basically. And then Arya and Sansa are like, what? Like, what? <laughs> like, what's going on? Like, what the fuck? Like, and that's the thing. Like, I would, I would hope that John could at least go to his brother who can see possi- a possible future and be like, if I tell them, what will yeah. happen? If I don't tell them, what or will like, happen? Like, how about you don't Brand say is anything, Brad? literally Brand? the worst <laughs> character. How about you just don't say anything? Because, like, like, maybe he's not going to tell them right now. He's like, you don't have to yeah. tell them. You know that, right? And then they're like, what? Like, obviously, now he has to tell them. Um, and so... Yeah. I also just love that, like, John, after all of that, he's like, Brian, yeah, you tell Yeah, he's them. like, you want to <laughs> like, tell them, big guy? You want to tell them, big boy? He's like, yeah, you teased it. He's like, so now you got to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the one thing that I will say that I got pissed off at is we don't get to see the reveal. I to see it. Because I wanted to know what their totally. reaction was. Like, were they surprised? Were they concerned? Were they, I was like, really were they, like, upset. sick? She's like, you're also a dragon. No, I was really upset. I was like, that anyway. was literally, like, aside from John finding out and Danny, the next people were, like, his family. So it's like, I don't understand why you yeah. wouldn't show us their reaction. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. I mean, I guess they don't like now. It's gonna like be the secret that everybody keeps finding out about, so we don't we don't have to see every single one of but those I didn't moments. Care but to see even it's his sisters. I just to see, yeah, the sisters like, that's finding out like that would a pretty big yeah. thing to see. Um. So anyway, so that happens in that moment, and it was pretty powerful because you see how Sansa just doesn't want to trust anybody. Like she doesn't want to trust any bitches, and Arya is just like, well, whatever. What are you gonna do? Um, so then it cuts to the hound and he's like dipping Winterfell and Arya catches up to him and they have a little cute moment yeah. too. Um, but they say some things that are kind of ominous that I don't know what that means. Yeah. Like the hound says something and he basically says, I'm not planning to come back because he has his mission and we know what his mission is. He's there his to brother. kill the fucking mountain. And he's mountain. probably not going to survive and he, and he knows that. So he's like, I'm good he's with like dying, survive. whatever. Yeah. Like I'm good. My theory, just as a side, my theory is that, like, the hound is going to die by the mountains, like, by the mountain, and Arya is going to step Aww. in and save her, like, Maybe. either, like, avenge his death, because, like, the mountain is still one of the names on her list, True. right? So, if you think about it that way, like, she's still, like, oh, on her mission, she's still, happen. like, getting it done, yeah. and it would make it all, like, kind of come all the like, way back kill around. him for him, you know? exactly because like he's been saving her all this all this time too so anyway so they have this quick conversation the one thing that i will point out that i have a question about and maybe you guys can answer this and maybe you know the answer mb but she says i don't imagine myself coming back either and i'm like why that's your fucking family home and i was like does she is she does she know something that did brand tell her something that maybe he she's not going to come back from this from this fight like is, is she planning to I die think, in this look, fight? Uh, look, I think there's two things. I think she has a mission. She's got names on her list and she yeah. wants to get rid of them. Um, and she will. But look, if you're, if you're going to kill someone like Cersei or you're going to kill someone like, like that, I feel like there really is no coming back from it. Like she probably won't make it out alive. Now, having said that, That's I true. think it's more more um, interesting and because I, I love her character. I think she's she's really lived her life this entire series of like I have this list and when it's done like I'll die like I'm good with dying when it's done but what happens when like she's not done like what if imagine like she finishes her list and she's not dead and she's alive and now she has to question like she has to like find a new purpose my life right now and and I almost yeah and I almost you can be a kid exactly and I almost want her to like do it survive and then she she does go back to Gendry and she's like, wait, like maybe I do want this life, this life that she's always yeah. rejected and said that she never wanted. But now that she feels fulfilled in another way, like now she can go and be that with him, you know. But like right. also this is like a Disney t- right. Disney fairy tale story that I'm saying right now. And I'm really happy about that, <laughs> but it probably won't happen. Yeah, but, but do you know what I mean? But like the like, fact that rev- like the fact that revenge is her only plot line and her only desire and her only drive once she's able to accomplish all those things what's the exactly. point point? and the thing that the thing that kind of scares me i guess for her character and especially after she says i'm not planning to come back is they're gonna like if they kill her off it would totally suck like she literally killed the night fucking king for her to just die in this war against cersei I don't even I can't even imagine who could kill her. That would be enough, enough of a reason yeah. for me to be like sick. Like that was a sick death for Arya Stark. Like I can't imagine what her end would be. So like is she gonna pull off a fucking necklace and die just like fucking I really like, hope Melisandre? She survives, like, man. I don't know. I don't but 
And that's what I mean. I just don't. But at the same time, I don't see her having another hero moment where like she goes and like does some next level shit because she already fucking killed no, the Night right. King. Like it you're doesn't right. get any like, bigger than that. What else can top that? And so, that's what I'm worried about because I'm like, what else are they going to yeah. give this girl that like it's going to be like so next level? Like I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm very interested to see what they do with their character, and I hope they do her justice because she really is a fan favorite. And if they fucked up like her death or whatever happens in her, to her later, people gonna be, be pissed. So later on, there is a conversation that uh, Jamie has with Tyrion. They're talking about like how he just had sex or whatever, and he's gonna stay in town. And Bronn comes out of fucking nowhere. He literally like just shows up in Winterfell. What did you think and of I was that? Because like, I felt like it was so random that he shows up holding this huge bow. And like, yeah, uh, nobody questions Bronn entering Winterfell. No one's like, oh, you're holding this like ginormous bow. Like, cool. He just like walks into the room. Like, he's not like he's not like an assassin, like fucking Arya. He's not like a ninja. He's not able to just like sneak his way in through things. But he did. He found his way into Winterfell without anybody noticing him with his gigantic bow. So he threatens uh, Jamie and Tyrion and says, I'm going to kill you. Your sister like is going to give me River Run if I if I kill you guys. And they're basically like, we'll give you something else better if you keep us alive. You're, you'll are you get High Garden. And I, like, if you're asking me what I thought about the scene, I thought it was bullshit. It was I thought it was stupid. I, it was so like, unnecessary w- because in the end, so they both end up going back to King's Landing. I was like, bro, this guy could have just waited for them in King's Landing. Like, he came all the way to Winterfell and then they all went back anyway. For no so, reason. like, it was so stupid. Yeah. It's such a weird storyline. Like, and I don't know where they're going to go. Beyond with it. that, like, I didn't understand why they were bringing Bronn back into the story outside of the fact that, like, you know, he was a relatively likable character, you know, and we haven't seen him at all this season. So this was his mission. He comes in, like, completes half of his mission, and then he just disappears because he doesn't even say, like, I'm going to help you guys fight. He's just like, I'm not doing anything. I'm out of here. Yeah. I was like, why did we have this character who was such a cool guy to watch? He was like this badass guy. He saved all of them. Like so many times he Unless saved he plays a Tyrion really big and role Jamie. In like I don't but but like what big like role? Like at this her, point they totally, I don't know, like something maybe. I don't know, man. I just don't I just feel like they wrote him in because they didn't want us to forget about him, but it wasn't for any greater purpose. It was just to be like, "Oh, fan favorite, like here he is. I don't Bye." Know, it was lame. It felt, I didn't like yeah, it at all. It I thought so it was a really up. weak point. One of the, one of the weakest and like, points guys, of the episode. And like, guys, don't forget that sure. scene that we saw in the beginning of the season where like Kyburn is even telling him like go kill Jamie and Tyrion. That was shot for season yeah. 7. So like it even shows more yeah. so that like this doesn't even fit in like why why is this here? Like this is so random. No. Not at all. Yeah. So anyway, so that happens so randomly. We'll so see. then we cut to Sansa and she's all like freaking brooding yeah. on the on the balcony. And at this point, like, yeah, Danny's like <laughs> flying with the dragons or like having a good time, whatever. And she's watching the dragons and she just she looks a little scared. She looks like she's like, holy shit, whatever. Um, and yeah. then Tyrion finds her on the balcony and he's like, girl, what's going on? Like, w- like whatever. And she's zoned out. Like, she's not answering him right right away. She's taking her time. She's right. like, why her? Like, why this bitch? Like, who yeah. chose this girl as, like, the next queen? Yeah, yeah. And Tyrion has, like, a really beautiful moment. He's like, why not her? Like, she stayed all these people. Like, whatever. Like, he kind of goes into, like, convincing Sansa he about Danny yeah. and, and the fact that, like, whatever, maybe, like, John's in love with her or whatever. Um, and then Tyrion says something really weird because he's like, he's like, your brother always told me he wasn't a Stark or something like that. And then Sansa gives him a look like, wait, like, do you know too? Yeah. Um, but obviously he doesn't know yeah. at that point the truth about John. Um, right. And then just as he's about to leave, she calls him back. And she's right. like, wait, I got to tell you something. And I was like, no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to tell you something that I just told my brother that I would never tell anybody ever. Like, she couldn't even last 24 no, hours. No, she lasted like 10 minutes. Secret. 10 minutes. Arya had to leave. Arya, yeah. like, legit left the freaking kingdom to go somewhere else. Like, you went and, like, I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> what did you think of yeah, her telling so him? Useless. Like, what, how did you feel? <sighs> I mean, I think that it was expected out of Sansa because I feel like she doesn't know what to do with this information, but she thinks that she can use this as a moment to maybe change the course of course of everything happening the truth of the matter is she and danny don't get along and she is worried and she doesn't trust her where like whether or not she should be trusting her i do agree that she should be trusting this How, woman who why doesn't basically she trust, saved exactly, the whole family like, why don't you trust her like what has she done at this point i don't to know make what she needs her. to do to prove yeah. herself 
Like she, yeah, she hasn't I don't been know. shady I don't to know. you at all. So like, I don't under like if she had been shady, I get it. But like, she really hasn't done anything to you know make you whatever hate or whatever. Is it just because you know she what has it dragons? is? Like, is that why you're scared? I think if you go all the way back, if you go all the way back to like how she was raised with Littlefinger telling her basically don't trust anybody and everyone has a motive and you always have to ask yourself like what do they yeah, what's in it for true. them in those situations. Like, she literally lives her life that way because that's how she survived all this way. So she's constantly, constantly, constantly asking herself, who is this person? She's all about, you know, the Starks being the family, that the only family that she can trust. She can only trust family because no one else is family. And I don't know. And I guess now that... Do you that, think she um, wants the know, throne herself? See, I thought the same thing. I was like, maybe she wants a little bit of that power too. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know, man. Like... I, I don't want Sansa to be this like broody bitch up in the north just like angry and like distrustful of everybody because I think that she's so much more than that but they're really setting her up to be this person that just like schemes continually schemes yeah, and like, like sits finger, there and is like I don't trust anybody I don't like so I don't know what I want from her at this point and I'm really worried that they're not gonna like play her out properly either um, I, I worry for a lot of the Stark family to see what they're going to do with their characters because I think that they're so important and so integral to the way the story began that for them to just kind of land flat by the end of the series, it would be really disappointing. So I'd love to see Sansa kind of like maybe make a 180 and figure her life out and support Danny and maybe come in at the right moment, like the perfect moment and be like, I support you and I'd love to see when that, I really, but when I don't I really know. look at the I'm bigger sure. dynamics of this show, I really do feel like this could have all been in the previous season. Like, I, I, I really yeah. do wish we sat with these characters longer and we had these more of these moments because it is really getting interesting right now. Like seeing all these major players yeah. that come together and have these moments where like they don't trust each other, but like why don't they trust each other? But like I just feel like there hasn't been enough time. And For and it's sure. like, but what has Danny done to you, girl? Like she really hasn't done anything. Um, like she did nothing you know? to so you that's wrong. What, like, anyway, so yeah, it's um, I don't know. She tells Tyrion, and so it's yeah, now so Tyrion she tells goals, Tyrion basically. in that yeah. moment. And then John has like all these crazy goodbyes. Like she literally, he literally has a goodbye with every one of his best friends. So he says goodbye to Tormund, and he says. You know, like, you're going to go back up north. And Tormund's like, yeah, I'm not going to stay here. Winterfell kind of sucks. Like, we need to, like, spread our wings and fly as, like, the wildlings. So I guess he's going to be the leader of the wildlings. But Tormund dips. And then John says, you need to take Ghost with you. And I was like, Ghost? I was like, what? I was like, MB's going to love this because she wanted that moment from time. No, so, no, I did uh, not like, want this moment. Like, guys, I did not cry <laughs> when Jorah died. I didn't cry when Lyanna died. I didn't cry when Beric died. I didn't cry when <laughs> Missandei died. I fucking cried when this dog had to say bye to his owner, okay? That shit was so <laughs> fucking sad. Like, this poor dog. Like, his eyes were like... Yeah. His, so, basically, yeah, he tells Tormund, like, take, take him with you. Like, he belongs in the north. And he literally, like, yeah. looks over to, like, freaking Ghost. And Ghost's like, no, like, I want to be with you. And then John's like. And he's, like, missing an yeah. ear. This poor, like, this he poor fought, dog. I felt so he bad fought, like, him. a freaking, like, m like, you know, boss last week. And yeah. now John's, like, all, like, yo, get rid of my dog. Like, leave him up in the north. And John's <laughs> face was, like, shame. Like, it was, like, pure shame. It was, like, he looked at Ghost with, like. Yeah. Like holding his head down because like he couldn't even look at him, and then Ghost just like looks at him like I missed you. Like it was just so sad. Yeah. I I couldn't watch it, and then I watched it again for the second time, and I start to cry again, and I was like I can't do this anymore. It was it was, really, it was, really, was really sweet moment, but then he also says bye to Sam and yeah. Gilly. Um, Gilly's pregnant with like Sam's actual baby, which was kind of <laughs> like cute. I impregnated her um, with my sperm. But <laughs> he was like, like I yeah, had sex with I her, think and he it knows was how great. Sex works. And she's like, Yeah. <laughs> Um, what do you but, think about that? Like I said, it was a lot of like, like what if, them being if, pregnant. No, like if this is the end of <laughs> Sam's storyline, like like what do you think of all of it? I just think that like fine, they're closing up these storylines, which is fine. But it really did feel like a goodbye for John. Like there, oh, no, it was for sure. Like is he does, said goodbye? Is like, that an implication that John is not gonna be around maybe, anymore? Maybe or just like or to not your point, it's the other way yeah. around. Like they're not gonna yeah. be around. And anymore. if so, uh, yeah, I can. And see And if that. so, I'm kind of disappointed with Sam's character because like 
that war he he was such a little bitch in that war like he like he useless. and i'm not blaming him as a character i'm blaming like the writers and like what they like they could have let him fight a little more in that war if that bit. was his last last like thing yeah. you know for sure but he was never about a, like being a warrior. No, and he not, was always about being and smart saying, and like saving the no, world not, that way. And I'm not saying like he needed to like kill him, like all these people. Just like one or two like like nice kills, you know. Like just give him something if this is yeah. going to be the end of him, you know. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess I can see that. But like, I like going back to John and whether or not he's going to die in the capital. I did worry because. Like in that scene before with Sansa and Tyrion, she does say like the men in my family don't do well yeah. in the capital. Yeah. So I'm like, is this foreshadowing? Could be. Like I'm trying to pick up on everything that the writers try to give us, but I, and I, I also think we'll they're trying to steer you in that direction too, because like now we are like listening to every single line and stuff. So like her saying that, yeah. like now, yeah, like you're scared now. You're like, oh my god, like he's not gonna make it out. Um, yeah, but I don't know. That's so true. we do cut to now everyone's like basically like on the journey to like I guess they're going to Dragonstone right. first. Um, so we yeah. do see all the ships and like Grey Worm and Masande have like a cute little like Titanic moment. They're like on the ship and they're like holding hands, right. um, <laughs> like smiling, smiling like yeah. so happy. And then like it cuts to like because they just arrived to Dragonstone. Like it fast forwards to them like being at Dragonstone, like just about to reach the shore. And the dragons are like seeing like the area and they're like, yes, they see the castle and they're flying around and Danny's so fucking happy. Masand is happy. Grey Room's happy. Um, and it shows Tyrion and Varys talking. So they have their moment and they're talking about the fact that, you know, this whole shit went down. So he's told he's already told Varys at this point. And Varys is kind of talking about what to do about the situation. And Tyrion's like you know like this is a secret still and versus like how many people know and he's like well including you like eight people on tops and versus like well i know now so it's not going to be secret no more <laughs> like yeah, she's like not, i'm yeah. gossip girl <laughs> i'm gonna tell XOXO, everybody <laughs> Varys knows <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah he fully is gonna tell everybody so he's like so they're trying to figure something out uh, you know, Tyrion says, like, you know, we can marry them and they can rule together. And Varys is like, she's so overpowering. She's not going to want to, like, you know, she's just going to take over and people are not going to deal with that. And then Varys is like, you need to, like, I need to protect the his, realm. His That's my job. His initial reaction for Varys is always like, who's going to be the actual viable, like, king or queen? And so the minute he sees that there's like, there could be like this tension or like this other thing plan he jumps ship like he's like literally like fuck her like get rid of danny like yeah. maybe it's gonna be john like whatever and Tyrion gets so cheese he's like bro like how many like years are you gonna live like just hopping from like you know family to family like aren't you ever gonna have loyalty yeah and he makes a really good point he's like i'm, I'm loyal to the realm like i'm not loyal to like one single family like person and i to and i and i get right. that too like there is there's something in that as well because like he he works for you know for the the country essentially or the world he doesn't work for one person the realm but yeah, yeah. you know it's like fuck like you're gossip girl homie like you're you're just like how do you yeah. like ditch her that quickly um yeah so uh yeah so i don't know what to do with his situation and i don't know what his storyline is going to be and like what p part he's going to play because he's still kind of destined to die because we know that he's sure. been kind of written to yeah, die yeah. Um, I just hope that he doesn't screw over Danny I think before that happens. I think you're right. You know? Like in your note, like you do have like, can they give Danny another option than burn down the city? Like they're spending all this time like chatting right. in the boat, like about like fucking like, like John's real parents. I'm like, can you guys discuss an idea of like how she can take over this freaking castle without like burning everyone down? Yeah. Like, how about that? Exactly. Like, gossiping. If you don't trust her, if you think that she's going to be this crazy person and like burn the whole city down, then give her an actual viable yeah. option outside of burning the fucking city down and she'll take it. You know, like you're right. They've definitely painted her to be this whole heart like cold hearted monster who doesn't want to like, no, that's Cersei. She's the fucking crazy bitch in this situation. Like, Everything that Danny's ever done that's been ruthless has been because of something and it's for the greater good. Cersei literally does everything for herself and for her family. Like there's a major, major difference. difference between the um, two of so, those so, things. So, yeah, so, so also what happens um, on the boat is that uh, it cuts kind of back to the like the upstairs and you see like Danny right. and she's like on her like dragon with like Rhaegar like beside right. her. They're like cruising and I did not expect it at all. The music was like so happy. It was like, oh, da -da -da. Man. Yeah. and then the fucking she's like spear smiling comes, like, yeah. right into Rhaegal's like stomach, and he starts like screeching. Yeah, she freaks out. It hits him again, oh, like in his wing, God. like his wing like rips apart. 
and then I'm like, okay, maybe yeah. he's alive. Like, tell, like he's okay. Like he'll be good. The he can fucking still like spirit comes like right through his eyes, basically, and like through his fucking his neck. neck. Like he fucking and, like, tanks the blood at just that point. Out, and like he went right into the water. I was like, water, no, and, like, everyone, like, tearing, like not like, again. Like, well, because, so, and and that's what's so powerful too. Like the screeching of these animals, like when they're when they're hurt yeah. or like when they're dying. Like it's so fucking powerful and it's so sad. It's and so he just crashes into the and water sad. and like you're right like it's right beside dragonstone like it's their home and it just hits so much harder like yeah you know the night king one was hard like they were just doing like a victory lap at that point they're like yes yeah. we're home now and then it's like boom sh- I, like I you're just, fucking dead i was like, like, just like, like it wasn't even during a battle no. it was like literally during like them just chilling and getting home and you i know? think that's what annoys me is the fact that like nobody was fucking looking out for any ships and my i, add, I watched so it again true. like so many times over and literally like they're out in the open like they could have seen these ships i don't understand how they didn't see these ships i think it was just like around a different cove so they wouldn't have seen it but no, danny could have seen exactly, it maybe she could have looked down like thing. a like they're around a cove but like they still have to have a clear shot of the dragon. They can't shoot the, the spear around the cove angle. Yeah. They have to shoot it up. So, like, she she should have seen them. She could have... She just wasn't like, paying attention. Like, it's so stupid. She's an idiot. Like, it's like, it's like these guys are making stupid moves. And I'm like, do you guys even deserve to be here at this point? Like, yeah. come on. I felt so bad for Rhaegal. I was like, you did him so dirty. This poor guy who got his ass handed to him by his dead brother Viserion just last episode. He's barely able to fly himself. There were so many holes in his fucking uh, wing. And then he just gets killed right yeah, away. I was, was like, lot. what the hell, man? I felt so bad and for him. He obviously and Drogon's out here being like, I'm still perfect. I'm sorry, and then, bye. Like, yeah. like, I just... And then Danny gets And like, then there was like a really quick standoff because like she rages out. She's about to fucking kill and that's him. The thing. Like they're trying and to cut to you're... her reactions every time something happens, and she's fuming at this point. Like all these little things are she's are like screaming off her head her brain off, yeah. and, and, and in her, and she's and you could just see like she's gonna blow up at any point, which is totally understandable. She has all this pressure on her. She's tried all these years to yeah. get to this place. Like if she didn't feel any type of way, she would be a robot. She's not a robot. She's obviously gonna feel. Yeah. She's gonna feel like you know she's she's. And those are her kids. Yeah. Like her kids are fucking dead. Like it's so sad so, to see it all happen. So she's like about to kill uh, Euron, and then he aims at her, and then she has to like dip because then she's gonna die. It was gonna be like a suicide mission. So then they redirect all their arrows to the other ships, and they basically destroy the entire the fucking fleet. fleet. Yeah. Like, like blow that so shit stupid. out of the water. Literally, so stupid. Um, why did you think it was? I stupid? just felt like they weren't they they just weren't tactical like they were so fucking stupid they like anchored in the middle of the ocean like what the fuck are you guys yeah. doing like how about you look around to see yeah. these other ships like you're, you're still at war like you're not just like peacefully like driving like these ships um and the way the way that it looks like as you can see where you're on is like they have such a clear view of 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 danny's ships like they were so stupid about all yeah. of it and these spears come like flying through the ships everything is torn down everyone gets like put like pushed overboard they end up on shore and Grey Worm, like, finds himself finally, but he can't find Masande. And he's like, oh, my God, she's yeah. missing, she's missing, she's missing. So, obviously, like, we're like, fuck, like, is she dead now? Or, like... First, I thought she was going to, like, show up on shore like she was going to be, like, dead. Like, yeah, she drowned in the fu- yeah. um, in that thing. I would have been like, damn, that's tragic yeah. shit. But instead, she gets fucking kidnapped. Um, so, that whole situation happens. Word travels back to Winterfell, and Jamie finds out about it. And so does Sansa. And Sansa says something sassy like, I'm gonna I'm so sad that I'm not gonna see your dumb like sister die because she's gonna fucking die yeah. now. Um which is kind of funny for her to say that to him because I'm like, Yeah, with Danny at the helm out here about to kill Cersei for you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, like you just like ripped the fact on this that Sansa's so Yeah. Yeah, like you should be so happy that you're not going to fucking fight Cersei right now. Like Danny's doing, doing it for, it for you. you. Like, People are thing. dying because yeah, of her. Like, it was such a it was such a weird yeah. thing anyway. for Sansa to say in that moment because I was like, uh, okay, fine, yeah. whatever. But I think what this this was meant to do was really entice Jamie, and it kind of shocks his world. So because of what happens with uh, so because of what Jamie hears, he decides to head down south. He's like, I gotta go. I need to leave, and he decides to leave in the middle of the night and ditch his fucking of course, new girlfriend. Like any Brienne, shady ass motherfucker, which does. totally sucked. 
<laughs> yeah, so he dips, doesn't say bye. He gets on the horse and he says something really profound. Not profound, but it was like sad to hear him say it because she starts it off by saying like, you're better than this. You're a good man. Like you don't deserve to go down there and just die for your sister. And he says... Like, I pushed a kid out of a window for her. I started a war for her. I did all these things. And it was for Cersei. We're the same person, yeah. basically. Like, we're both just as like fucked up as each other. and I'm just and as I, hateful. And so, like, I have to fucking go. Yeah. Which was okay. sad. Because, like, this poor guy, after all these years, has that low self-esteem that, like, he can't even think that he's any anything My better than that. My question to you, you know? is, do you think he went to kill her or to save her? That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe he went to go see if he could talk to her and be like, yo, bitch, you're fucking crazy. Yeah, because we were talking about this at work and like half the room was like he went to kill her and half the room was like, no, like he went to save her. I think he just is drawn to her. Right. So no matter what happens and what he ends up doing there, I don't think he knows what he's doing. He's just going because he's magnetized by her, who she is and what she's doing out there. Like. There's no way that he was just going to sit in Winterfell and do nothing. Of course yeah. he was going to involve himself in this story, in this final story. So the fact that he even wasted any time, like, sleeping with Brienne was a waste and for I me. Do, was and like, I do think, like, he's going to go to kill her. Like, he's going to kill her in the end. Or he's going to yeah. try to kill her. And at this, He's going to, like, hit her and then, like, someone else will kill him maybe. And then Arya will kill her. I don't know. Well, my thing is, is I always thought that maybe there's a tie with Brienne in the story where, like, maybe Brienne dies and Jamie gets so enraged think, that he kills Cersei. I think that's probably what's going to happen. I feel like he has to be triggered yeah. one more time. And For maybe sure. she follows 100%. Jamie to King's Landing and she kind of gets fucked and then she dies and then that's going to trigger him. Yeah. I can see that happening for sure. Because I was going to ask, do you think that Brienne's going to make yeah. it down to King's yeah. Landing? Because then it asks, like, it begs the question, like, does, is Sansa going to follow her now? Or are they going to head back down together? Oh, yeah, true. Um, but, like, a fortnight's a long-ass time. They're going to, like, fast-forward this shit real quick. So, anyway, whatever. Jamie shows up. Because that's the thing. Just like Arya in the last episode, coming out of nowhere, we can always expect Jamie to kind of come out of nowhere at the very yeah. tail end of this epi- of next week's episode and really, like, fuck shit up, you know? So, we'll see. Um, So... Right before the final scene, they have a war room conversation where Danny basically says, I want to burn the whole city down. This is when Varys essentially says there's other options. Don't become your like father. Like, don't do what you've always wanted to do. But like I said, doesn't give her literally any other options. She she just says, like, don't do this. And she's like, fuck you. And then that's that's whole situation. So then they have this standoff in the front of I guess it's in front of king's landing right like at the gates is that where they were yeah so they're at the gates of like i guess the red keep maybe um okay and and at this point obviously like you know we know that cersei has masande and like danny knows that they have masande um and she's like she's my girl and like i'm not gonna let her like kill her whatever so yeah you know they all show up like danny gray worm um Tyrion's there some of the armies there the dragon wasn't there right uh yeah he was like way in the back, in the back. Okay, i thought like, i saw him and i was like girl why are you bringing him here right now um i know it's like bad idea I, I just don't appreciate like even like just logically like cersei could have killed them like in seconds like they're standing in the open yeah like, if she really really wanted to like put this to rest this could have been done like right now <laughs> you know yeah the rules of war at this point she's fucked up yeah, so many things no like you'd think that she would just be like break this cersei. last rule yeah um yeah so Basically, what happens, and I, I really, really hated this scene. I fucking hate Tyrion. I think he's useless at this point. I, Such I idiot. loved him, but this, he's a fucking moron. Um, Kyburn <laughs> comes out and he tells Kyburn like, "Yo, let's work it out. Like, come on, like we can't like do this. Like, someone has to step down." Kyburn's like, "Yeah, like tell your bitch to step down. Like, our, mine isn't gonna do that." Right. Um, and Tyrion kind of just like kisses, okay, so like, "Fuck it, whatever." He goes closer to the wall, um, and for a second, it looks like Cersei's gonna like shoot Tyrion. And I almost wanted her to. Right. I was like, just kill him. Like, who cares at this just point? Just kill him. You know? <laughs> just get rid, just of, get rid him. of him. Yeah. Like, what's he doing? Um, and then he looks at her and he's like, I know you're not, like, you're not an evil person. Like, you're a mother. You're good. You loved your children. Right. Like, the same, same fucking lines that he said. Same shit, like, man. eight times over. Like, bro, you said this eight times yeah. over. Like, she's not going to care anymore. She doesn't care anymore. She's, she's, she's not going to so change. She's so past that, you know? Yeah. And he's like, I know for your baby's sake, like, you don't, you know, you want to be alive for your baby and all this bullshit. And like her, it cuts to her face and like, 
I feel like everyone's like, oh, like she feels bad. And I'm like, no, I, I don't trust her. Like she's psycho. She doesn't like, give no fucks, fucked. man. And he's like, just let yeah. her go. Like whatever, you know, like, and she goes up to Miss Andy and she's like, say your fucking last words. Cause like you're going to yeah. die. And Miss Andy just like looks <sighs> up at Grey Worm and she looks up at Danny and like, they both know that like, she's going to die. And she's going to die. Her last words are Dracarys. Balenciaga. And then I was like, I'm like, uh, no. is the dragon coming? Like, like what's happening? Is like a secret like word or something? Like what's going to happen? Right. Um, no, but she says it because she's like, fuck yeah. this shit. Burn this like, goddamn burn the fucking shit down, city down. Which is what she should do. Um, and then they basically like just cut yeah. Masande's head off and she dies. And Tyrion's like, Why? And she dies. And like Tyrion's face, heavy. like he just looks like a loser. Like you thought that was going to work? Really? Like what? What are you planning to do? What are you now, gonna do, bro? Like you're gonna you're gonna cry to your sister and be like you're pregnant. Like, be and that's nicer. the thing. I, f- I feel bad because I feel like he's stuck in a situation where everything just sucks for him right now. You know, like Danny has this secret and he doesn't know what to do about that storyline. Yeah, like and he at the same time, like his sister's do. fucking crazy. You know what I mean? I don't know. Um, I don't know what they're gonna do with him. I just, like I said, I feel like a lot of the characters this episode have really taken a weird dip for me, and I don't know how they're gonna wrap them up without me being like, "Wow, what a fucking shitty way to do that," you know? So it's I have very, I'm very, very nervous for the final two episodes after watching this episode, and that's what I meant in the beginning of our podcast. Is it really set me in this moment where there's so many characters and we're really down to the wire. Every moment is going to count in terms of how they set everything up. And I'm really worried that they're not going to do it justice. I don't know. Um, we'll and just just so that the episode ends, like we end off with right. Danny looking at her and like disgust. And she just turns around yeah. and she's like, fuck this shit. And she just like walks and her face like they focus on her face and she's just so yeah. effing pissed. And I like felt Amelia good about Clark it. like, like burned like, into my soul watching that. Like I was like, yeah, oh, like totally. watching her. She made me angry. I was like, oh and my that's God, how I wanted her to pissed. be. I'm like, girl, get angry, get mad, like burn this shit down. Whereas like other people yeah. are like, oh my God, Danny's crazy. See, like she, I'm like, hello, they just killed her dragon and then they just killed her best yeah. friend. Like, can she be angry? <laughs> like, can, can she, she can you let her be angry for fuck's sake yeah, yeah like, honestly geez. like Varys is like i'm protecting the realm i'm like this girl just watched her fucking child and her best friend die in less than one day like can you give her a fucking okay break? so i have two questions um, for you before yeah, we move forward pissed. for this scene okay, go. so my first question is it's really funny that Tyrion looks up at cersei and tells her that she's pregnant because technically she, he shouldn't know that she's pregnant because she just told Euron that she's pregnant. No, she did. She did tell him. Remember when they were talking in the very beginning? No, but what I'm saying is, like of last um, season. What I'm saying is, Euron. If Euron is smart enough, he if he heard that, if oh. he heard his, Tyrion say you're pregnant, he's gonna be like, "How the fuck does your brother know that you're pregnant? Like you just told me yesterday, right?" And we right, just had right, sex right, last right, week. Right. So, like, how does your brother know? True. And Euron was wow, there. Wow, that's a really good point. And Euron was standing there. So I was like, I think someone in the lunchroom said this. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, that's so true. Um, But, like, yeah. is he going to pick up on it? Like, is he going to... Fu- like, because I right. do feel like the fact that she's lying to him is going to come back to bite her in the ass. Um, You think so? I, I definitely think so. I feel like her lies are going to ca- catch up with her. It's just it's just too much at this point. I mean, she's gotten away with worse things. I don't think a lie at this point from like this dumb dumb who probably doesn't even know what's going on in his life. Half that's, the time. that's what I mean, though. Like, like, that's such a weird flub. And like, it, I don't know. It's just like, I guess he wasn't listening because probably like, oh, like I got her pregnant. Um, yeah, exactly. He's like, I got the I got. The vagina, yeah. And so my second question to you and our in our audience is like. Did you feel like Masani could have done something a bit more in that in her final moments? I wanted her to fucking body check Cersei off the fucking wall, yeah. but it wasn't gonna happen. Like, I didn't want her to like. There's no. I didn't way. want her to body check her, obviously, but like I wanted her to like rip her crown off or like rip her hair or something before she like died. You know, <laughs> like just something. I don't know. Yeah. I just think that, you know, it was a very powerless moment for Masande. So I think no matter what you, how you wrap it around, she was stuck in such a shitty position to see her character go through all of this, 
like through all of this and to be liberated by uh you know Daenerys and then to be captured again and then enslaved again and put in shackles again in her final moments was extremely frustrating to watch yeah, like that, that's what I just mean. to see like, her story kind of like go up and literally all the way back down and her not having a redeeming moment where she's able to other and, and other than saying yeah, Jakaris, because I know that it was it was funny in that moment, but like at the same time, you kind of understand where she's coming from. She's like, burn this oh, motherfucker sure. down because this is for bullshit, sure. you know. So yeah, I, I mean, it, I I was disappointed in how passive she was, but she really didn't have an option. She didn't I mean, have at any, that point, they, like, they took all her options away. At that away. point, you're you're almost dead. Might well just do something crazy, you know, like. I just felt yeah. like I could have used a bit more from her as a character. Like she could have like pushed like somebody off of the Brit like thing, like somebody important, but there's nobody else important. Like maybe she could have killed Euron. But, it but been that's cool. what I mean. Like she doesn't have to kill anyone, even if she just like like runs after, tries to run after Cersei, and like they block right. her. Even that, like something where. But she was not. But the thing is, too, she's never been a fighter. Know, she's not going to like start like, now. She's not going to be like fuck this Earth, shit. Like, you just know, fucking do something. But she was always like a well-spoken woman. She's going to like say something as like powerful as she can. She's like, Jokaris, this motherfucker. Yeah. Okay, so honorable mentions just before we get into our roundups. So yes. we know from the prophecy or whatever it is that Arya we know. killed the brown eyes. She killed the yes. blue eyes. And yes. she's yet to kill the green eyes. Cersei. And Danny. Does Danny yeah, have green apparently, eyes? Apparently, like at the end of the episode, we do see a focus on Cersei's eyes <gasps> and then Danny's eyes. Yeah. Oh. But like it can't be Danny. Come on. Like that's the thing. I feel like they made a lot of parallels between the two of the yeah, characters like this episode. Out. They both were wearing the same colors. Like one of them was wearing red, the other one was wearing the same color red. Like I understand they're trying to make yeah. the parallels, but bitch, I don't believe it. Like I don't I'm not down for that yeah. shit and I don't think that she would kill her. But I will say I did have a quick quick theory when I was talking about it with my boyfriend last night and I was saying how you know, like it would be crazy if Arya at the end of the day decides to kill Danny to protect John and like uses her face to pretend to be Danny for the rest of the show. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Cause like, you know, this whole face people have been talking about this face swap thing and they felt like they were like like it was a moment that they should have used in the last battle of the Winterfell, but I don't know. Like maybe the face swap thing will come back around and she'll face swap with somebody important like Danny. We'll see. All right, let's get into our recap roundups. Recap roundups. Best, best moment. moment. My best moment, I think, has to go to Brienne and Jamie having sex. And I think, obviously, it's more than just the sex. I think <laughs> it's like the, you know, the confirmation that, like, obviously, they, there were feelings here. Um, they love each other, maybe. I just love the way, I just love the scene because Jamie looks so confused with his feelings. Like, he comes into that room, he's fucking nervous. Yeah. He doesn't know what to do. And she's nervous too, but like he he seemed like the more nervous one, and we've yeah. just never seen him in this kind of, you know, position. And like I don't know, it was really cute. I want to see more of it. I liked it, but no, I mean I was good with what we got. <laughs> You're like, personally. no, that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was good. I was good. I was fine. Um, my best moment is going to be the funeral scene in the very beginning because I just thought it was really powerful to watch. I think it was sad to see like this kind of final goodbye for these major characters and it was just really beautifully done and it was it's like what you said it was perfectly timed like it wasn't too long yeah. and sitting with this like sad funeral it was like in cry bye like yeah. go WTF, WTF moment. moment my WTF moment I think obviously has to go to Rhaegal getting killed like it just hit me out of like literally hit me out of nowhere like I was like what the fuck yeah um because I know just, like yes we can expect him to get in like one of them to die eventually but like just in this frame in this scene i just didn't expect it um because you know like everyone was happy and like whatever but like i get that that's usually yeah. when this shit happens r.i.p Regal. i was so sad um my wtf moment is gonna go to the dinner scene when Tormund is talking to john and he's saying how like oh what kind of person like rides a dragon yeah. like he must be a king he's so amazing and like it just pans to danny and she's sitting there and she's like stewing and she can't say anything because she's like bitch i've been riding dragons for years yeah. and no one's clapping for me like i, just I felt, felt so, so bad, bad for her, her that she's yeah. 
kind of like stuck back into this like man world totally, and it's like totally. unfair that no one's even recognizing her as a and so i kind of understand where she comes from when she tells john like you have to keep the secret they're never gonna it's respect it's like a boys me, club you know, you know? MVP. mvp listen my mvp's gotta go to the girl because i think she's gonna die soon but cersei you know she Ooh. she's playing everyone right now like she's fucking she survived she all of this she didn't have to lift a finger in the damn war like she played everyone <laughs> it's true she is playing everyone it's true um she's winning currently i think but let's see what happens next week yeah my mvp is gonna go to sansa and i know oh. this sounds a little controversial but i i think that she was able to stand up for her family even when everybody was like cool 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 I think that she has an angle that might come in handy, hopefully by the end of the se- series. Um, I don't. I hope that her story isn't done yet. Um, I don't know. I I really like Sansa, and I really feel like she's grown on me over the last couple seasons. And um, I want her to go out with something stronger. And I think something's coming, and I don't know what it is, but I. But don't have you feel like faith in her? And don't I, you feel like her telling Tyrion about John like that was pretty fucked up? I don't think it was a weak moment. I just feel like it was bound to happen eventually. Tyrion was meant to hear it, so I didn't blame Sansa. I feel like Tyrion would have found out somehow. But it doesn't anyway, matter. She, you know, like for me, it's beyond what the secret is about. It's the fact that you took a you took a like oath with your family. You like said like I promise I won't tell anyone, and then you went and told someone. Like that to me is like a betrayal on the family. You know. I don't know. I just feel like she was kind of. Like, I feel like her standing up for her family and standing up for what she feels is right, even though it might not be 100% yeah. right, is still kind yeah, of Yeah, like, I guess she's doing it for the greater good for her fam, but, like, I just didn't right. appreciate that she took this oath with her fam and then she, like, went against it. LVP. My LVP is going to go to Tyrion. Um, you know, I just really, in these moments, I expect him to come through with these, like, boss-ass, like, you know, comments or like these, like whatever, like these things to saying, to, especially to Cersei. And like, I'm waiting for him like to drop the bomb. And then he says the same thing. He's like, "You're pregnant. Like, you're a mom. Like, you have a heart, right?" Question mark. Question mark. Yeah. Like, no, she doesn't care, dude. Like, you're. Yeah. We, we're way sure. past that. Like, we're too deep into the show. After all these years, like, you're gonna. That's not gonna it's work. It's not gonna yeah, work anymore. Sure. You know. And and I just expected him to come to come at her with something stronger and something more powerful, and he couldn't do it. And the look that Danny gives him at the end, like she looks at him like a fucking failure. I'm like, cause he is. I'm sorry, he yeah. is. No, I mean, I, and I hope that he comes through, and that's yeah, what I mean. He, I feel I like I will. hope that these characters really pull through at the very end of it all. I'm gonna say that my LVP is Danny for not trying to figure this out better with John in the beginning of the episode, because I feel like outside of this gigantic war that's happening, and of course all the things that happen later in the episode are big moments but it would be really great if you could do this with your like the guy that you love and i know that he's your fucking nephew but maybe you guys could just squash this shit and just be done with it you know like i didn't like that she gave him an ultimatum i didn't like that she was strong holding him so hard in that moment and not giving him any options and it's like what we were saying in the beginning of the podcast this is like season one danny immaturity to me and i don't know why they're writing her this way and it makes me feel like it's not coming from a place that a developed character would have come from. I agree. You know? I agree, but I do want to like rebuttal and I do want to say in this moment, oh, she could have come out and just said, screw you, John, I'm the queen. You're going to do this and I'm going to, and this is how I'm seeing it. But she really didn't do that. She really started it off by saying, I'm in love with you and I want to do this with you. And I'm begging you. Like I've never begged you before. And she starts to cry and she's like, I'm begging you, like, just please don't say this. And he still right. rejected her. And it's like, you come from this vulnerable place and you open up and you say all these real things. And he still said no. And it's like, all she could do was say, okay, here's my ultimatum then. And it's like, I'm trying to go back to the scene and I'm like, how else would she have done it? Like, she really did come at it from a really like vulnerable place at first and it didn't work, you know? That's and fair. It sucks, That's fair. Right? And I mean, realistically john is the idiot who's like i don't know what to do i'm so fucking honorable and i need to tell everybody the truth all the time he should have played it better he should have just told her don't worry babe like i won't even tell anyone then like go tell sansa like you know she's gonna go tell someone anyways (laughs) and then he would have like yeah because like we're talking about secrets Yeah, that secret's gonna come out exactly. eventually, and she's gonna find out about it, and she's gonna be fucking. Yeah, pissed. and then like she so, won't blame you because like maybe you'll just say like I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, we'll you know see. what I 
the best, best line. line. My best line is from uh, Danny when she says, I'm here to free the world from tyrants. That is my destiny, and I will serve it no matter the cost. And yes. I was like, girl, there is going to be a cost, but if you do it, you got to do it right. So do it. <laughs> so do it right, girl. <laughs> do it right. Burn that shit down. Let's go. Yeah. My best line is going to go to Sansa, and it's actually a moment that we didn't talk about, but when she's talking to the Hound and at yeah. dinner, and she says, without Ramsey and Littlefinger, I would have stayed a little bird oh, all my I life. I love that. I, and I, I was like, wow. I just got chills. Yeah, because the Some Hound does shit. say, like, I'm so sorry everything happened to you. Like, you should have just stayed with me. Like, I would have been, I would have protected you. And, like, you wouldn't have gone through all that. I would have protected you the whole time. She says, she's like, yeah. no, like, I had to go through it to be this person that I am. And, like, it's such a beautiful moment. Yeah. It really, and he, like, smiles. He's like, holy shit. Like, she's so smart. It's like she made peace yeah. with, like, her her situation. Yeah, you know? it and was really beautiful. That's the episode, guys. Let us know what you guys thought about this episode. Um, Next episode is going to be one of the biggest episodes in all of television. So we're excited for it. Um, but yeah, let us know what you guys thought about this episode. Give us some theories. Give us your discussion points. And that's it. I want to thank our patrons of the episode, our lit rewinders, Tina and Sarge, Serena and Kate, and our mommy rewinders, Becca, Sarah, Tamla, and Taya. And if you would like to join our Patreon family, check us out at patreon.com slash recap underscore rewind. If you join, you'll get access to all things recap, rewind, exclusive contests, content, and updates. And also make sure you guys are checking us out on all of our socials, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. And you can also find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iTunes. Like, subscribe, follow, review, and comment to stay engaged with us at Recap Rewind. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.